In this video, we're going to learn another factoring technique called the sum and difference of cubes. So maybe that reminds you of another factoring technique you know, which is the difference of squares. So this is going to be similar, except we're working with cubes. So just a reminder, now that we know the factor theorem and how to use it to factor polynomials, we can use the factor theorem for any polynomial. So let's say that we don't know how to factor sum and difference of cubes, which we don't at this moment. We can always factor anything using the factor theorem and remainder theorem. So what factor, what's going to be a factor of this according to the factor theorem? Well, I know if I plug in a 3, 3 cubed is 27, minus 27 will make 0. So we know that if we were to plug in f at 3, f at 3 would equal 0. So therefore, x minus 3 is a factor. So if it's a factor, let's factor it. And I'm going to, sorry, let's not factor it. Let's divide x minus 3 into this polynomial so that we can find some more factors. So I'm going to use synthetic division because it's faster. So I'm going to put a 3 here, which is the root of our factor here, x minus 3. And then here I'm going to put the coefficients of all of the terms, including all the ones that are missing. Like we're missing x squared and x, so I've got to put a 0 in for there. So I'm going to put in a 1 to represent the coefficient of x cubed, a 0 in front of x squared, as another 0 in front of x, and then we have negative 27. So now let's just complete our synthetic division. So I'm going to drop this 1. 1 times 3 is 3. Add these guys together, and 3 times 3 is 9. And we've got 3 times 9 is, sorry, put a 9 here, and then 3 times 9 is 27. Add that together, and we're going to get zero. So we know this is our remainder, which we better get zero because we our remainder theorem said that we would get zero. And then here's our constant, here's our x, and here's our x squared. So if we were to factor this guy, and we would have gotten one factor was x minus 3. When we divided x minus 3 in, we got x squared plus 3x plus 9. So the question is, can this be factored anymore? Are there any two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to 3? And the answer is no. There are no two numbers that multiply 9 to and add to 3, so this can't be factored anymore. So what we've stumbled upon is actually a pattern. And a pattern is going to occur when we have two cube terms and either a difference between them or a sum of them. So in this case, this was a difference between two cube numbers. x is a cube number, x cubed is x cubed, and 3 cubed is 27. So if we take a look at this, our rule or our cheat, sort of like a shortcut, a difference of cubes can always be factored to this pattern. So if we take the cubed root of a cubed, we will get a, and the cubed root of b cubed will get b. And the first um, factor of this guy here is going to be a minus b. And that's the same thing here. The cubed root of x cubed is x, and the cubed root of 27 is 3. And so we have those there. And then the next is going to be a combination of them. So we're going to have a squared. So in our case, it would have been x squared. And there it is. And then we have a combination of a times b. In our case, it would be 3 times x. And there it is. And finally, we have b squared. So 3 squared is 9 and plus signs all in between. So if we had done the exact same example but with a plus sign here, we would have stumbled upon um, this pattern for a sum of cubes. So when, when we were talking about difference of squares, we there is no way to factor a sum of squares, but there is a way to factor a sum of cubes. So this is just a shortcut to um, factoring using the factor theorem in long division. So if you prefer to use the factor theorem in long division, you absolutely can. However, if we can remember this, the pattern of difference in sum of cubes, this can save us a lot of time. So let's try an example. So if we want to use the shortcut of sum and difference of cubes, we just need to make sure that we happen to have a sum or difference of cubes. So each term has to be a cube. So is x cubed, sorry, 8x cubed a cube? Well, if we take the cube root of it, we're going to get 2x. So yes, it is, because 8's a cube number, and so is x cubed. And then if we take the cube root of 125, we are going to get 5. So think of this as our a value. So I'm going to call this guy a. 
and think of this guy as our B. And then after that, we're just following the pattern. So if you can't remember the pattern, let's still take a look at it again. Okay, so here we go. So sum of cubes. We're going to take our A plus our B. So this is the cubed root of A cubed and the cubed root of B cubed. So A plus B. Then we're going to take A squared minus AB plus B squared. Can you remember that? So let's try it. All right, so our, our trick pattern. First, we've got A plus B. So we're going to have 2x plus 5. And then we have a squared, that's going to be 4x squared. And then a combination of a times b and a subtraction sign in front of it. So 2x times 5 is going to be 10x. And then plus b squared, which is 25. And that is our sum of cubes factored. If we'd used the factor theorem in long division, we would have gotten the exact same answer. Let's try this next guy. What the heck is this? Is this a difference of cubes, a difference of squares? If we can't recognize it at all, we're gonna to have to use the factor theorem. Well, something that I noticed right away is that these two have um, a common factor, which is seven. Seven is gonna go into seven and 448 and X. So we got a common factor this guy before we can figure out anything. So let's take out a seven X and we're gonna be left with X cubed minus 64. And now we can take a look at this guy, and now we've got a difference of cubes. X, is a, X cubed is cubed, obviously, and 64 is just 4 to the power of 3. So just remind ourselves, if we take X cubed, we get X, the cubed root of X cubed, sorry. And if we take the cubed root of 64, we're going to get 4. So here's our A value, and here is our B value. And now we just have to follow along with the pattern. So if you take a look up at the top of your notes, um, we're going to factor this thing using the pattern. And if not, use the factor theorem. But the first guy is going to be A minus B. So our A value is X, and then our B value is 4. Don't forget to copy down that 7X that we're not touching. Okay, then we've got A squared. So that's going to be X squared plus a combination of A times B with a plus sign in front. So we've got plus X times 4, which is 4X. And then adding b squared, which is going to be 4 squared, which is 16. And we can expand that to check. We could use the factor theorem and get the exact same thing. But there is our difference of cubes factored. Let's try these guys now. So what is this? First of all, is there any common factor? Well, no. Nothing goes into 81 and 16 other than 1. And there's no common variable. So next question is this a difference of cubes well 81 is not a cube number and either is x to the power of 4 and that's the same for 16 and y to the power of 8. this is not a difference of cubes so these are not cube numbers but they are square terms because i can take the square root of 81 x to the power of 4 that's just going to be 9x squared and I can take the square root of 16y to the power of 8. That's just going to be 4y to the power of 4. So I could factor this as a difference of squares. So we know the pattern for that. It's just going to be a plus b and then a minus b. So it's going to be 9x to the power of 2 plus 4y to the power of 4. I just moved it down a bit. And then we have 9x squared minus 4y4. And then we're done. Wrong, we're not done. Because this can't be factored anymore, but this is still a difference of squares. This is a square number, uh, sorry, a square term, and this is a square term. So remember that there is no way for us to factor a sum of squares, so we're going to be done with this binomial here, but this binomial can be factored even more. If we square root this guy, we're going to get 3x, and if we square root this guy, we're going to get 4 squared. So let's go ahead and continue to factor that last binomial. So we have 9x squared plus 4y to the power of 4, and then let's follow the same pattern. We'll do the sum first, so 3x squared plus 2y, sorry, not 3x squared, 3x, I just erase that little too, and then we have plus 2 squared, and now we have 3x minus 2y squared. And now are we done? Well, let's take a look one more time. We know we can't factor a sum of squares, so that one's done. Here we got another sum again, we can't factor this guy. Here, 
y squared might be squared, but a squared number, but uh, 2 and 3 and x aren't. So we are done factoring. So can we factor this example here? Well, we do, these are not cubed terms, so this is not a sum of cubes. We do know that this is a square term, and so is this one. But we don't know any tricks for sum of squares. So that means that we can't factor it at all. Even if we were to go to the factor theorem, first of all, we can't use it because we have this y there. But let's just think about why a sum of squares would not be factorable. So if I just changed it and drop that y, 16, so let's say that I was determined to factor this guy. Maybe no one's taught me a trick for a sum of cubes. Well, let's try to find a number that I could put in this x, in for x, in order for the relation to equal 0. So it would give us a remainder of 0. Well, if I put in a 1, 81 plus 16 will never be equal to 0. These are two positive numbers. So how could it possibly equal to zero? Even if I were to put a negative number in, the, in there, a negative number to an even power is always going to give me a positive number. So there's no way that this guy is ever going to be zero, which means that we can never factor it. So this is why we cannot factor a sum of squares. It's never going to give us a x-intercept. So therefore, this is not factorable. For this next example right over here, try this guy on your own and come back to the video once you're stuck or once you think you've got it fully factored. So if you're back at the video, you've attempted or fully factored this guy here. So these are two cubed numbers. There's a different sign in between, so, so we know we have a difference of cubes. So just in case you're having trouble finding the cubed root of higher exponents, don't forget the cubed root is really just the power of a third. So you can always just simplify 9 times a third, which is going to be 3. So the cubed root of x to the power of 9 is going to be x cubed, and the cubed root of 512 is going to be 8. If we follow the pattern, we've got this. So we're done, right? We followed the pattern. We're good. Well, we always got to look back at what we're left with and see if we can factor it anymore. So this guy might not be factorable, but how about this guy? Isn't that another difference of cubes? That's a cubed number or a term, and this is a cubed number. So we got to do it again. So go ahead and factor this guy one more time and then come back to the video once you've got it done. So now you factored x cubed minus 8, and this is what you should be left with. So we followed the pattern of a difference of cubes again, and we left this guy just hanging out at the end. And if you take a look at all of these um, factors, they can't be factored any further, so we know we're done. Let's try another example. So let's take a look at this guy here. Can we use any of our factoring tricks to factor this guy? Well, we have a different sign. That's our first clue. There's nothing in common, so we can't come and factor. Is this a cubed term? If you have trouble visualizing it, just figure it out using exponents. So the cubed root of x to the power of 6 is just going to be x to the power of 6 to the power of a third. And 6 divided by 3 is just 2. So it, 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 can't, it is a cubed term. And if we do the same to y, we're going to get the same result. We're going to get y to the power of 2. So we can factor this as a difference of cubes. But maybe you, you saw this and you thought immediately that those, that's a difference of squares, and you're not wrong. If we took the square root of x to the power of 6, that's just x to the power of 6 all to the power of a half, which is x to the power of 3. And we would get the exact same thing if we were to do that to y to the power of 6, we would get y to the power of 3, which means that you can factor this as a difference of cubes, or you can factor it as a difference of squares, and you're going to get the exact same results. So I'm going to factor it as a difference of cubes, but go ahead and try it as a difference of squares. You're going to get the exact same thing as long as you factor it completely. So factoring as a difference of cubes, we're going to call this guy our a value, and this guy our b value. So our First binomial is just going to be a minus b. So we're going to have ax squared minus y squared. And then we have a squared, which is going to be x to the power of 4. That's what x squared is going to be. And we have plus a combination of the two a times b. 
So plus x squared times y squared. And then plus b squared. So that's going to be y squared all squared, which is going to be y to the power of 4. So we've got to look at this again. We're not done because we can factor x squared minus y squared. That's just a difference of squares. And so this is going to give us x squared plus y squared. I lied. We're going to erase this because it's not going to be x squared plus y squared. Okay, so let's try this again. So the square root of x squared is going to be x. We've got x. The square root of y squared is going to be y. So we've got x plus y and x minus y. And then we have this trinomial at the end. x to the power of 4 plus x squared y squared plus y to the power of 4. And there's nothing else that can be factored, so we're done. All right, let's try one last challenge problem and try to factor this ugly looking thing. So automatically I see there's a plus sign. We've got a binomial cubed and another binomial cubed. So this is a sum of two cubed terms. So let's follow the pattern of sum of cubes and try to factor this guy and see what comes out. Okay, this is going to be fun. So let's cube root this guy. Cube root of x minus 3 all cubed is obviously going to be x minus 3. And the cube root of the other guy all cubed is also just going to be itself. So we've got 3x minus 2. So sometimes it's good to write these guys out just so that you don't get mixed up. So there, here's our a and here's our b. And let's get started on the pattern. So for sum of cubes, we're going to start off with a plus b. So here we go. Our a value is x minus 3 plus our 3x minus 2. And we're going to simplify that in the next step. Then our next term is going to be a squared. So that's going to be x minus 3 all squared. Then we've got a combination of a and b with a subtraction sign in front. So we've got x minus 3 times 3x minus 2. And then we have plus b squared. So plus, we've got 3x minus 2 all squared. Let's start to simplify. And this guy here, we've got some like terms. We've got x plus 3x. That's going to give us 4x. And then we've got negative 3 minus 2. That's going to be minus 5. Let's expand this guy here. So x minus 3 squared is going to be x minus 3 times x minus 3. That's going to work out to x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then, be careful, multiply these binomials first and then put in the negative. So that's so make sure you've got some brackets around here. So if we expand this guy out, we're going to have 3x squared. Then we're going to have x times negative 2 is going to be negative 2x. And then negative 3 times 3x is going to be negative 9x. So when we add those together, we're going to get negative 11x. And then negative 3 times negative 2 is going to be positive 6. And then finally, we've got 3x minus 2 all squared. That's just going to be 3x minus 2 times 3x minus 2. That's going to make 9x squared minus 12x plus 4. Let's take another step to simplify one more time. Try and do as much in our head as we possibly can. So taking a look at our x squared, we're going to have x squared here. This is going to become minus 3x. Don't forget we're putting this guy in, this negative. We're distributing it in. I'm just going to write this here so that we remember. Okay, so we've got x squared minus 3x. So now we're talking negative 2x. And then adding 9x. So we have 7x squared to start us off. So we've got positive 7x squared. And then we've got negative 6x plus 11x, that's 5x, minus another 12x, and that's going to give us negative 7x. And then finally, for our constant term, we have 9 minus 6 plus 4. Is it a mistake? No, we have another 7, plus 7. Phew. So after all this craziness, can this be factored anymore? Well, 4x minus 5 can't be factored anymore, but how about this guy? We can definitely factor out a 7. So I'm going to take out the 7, and we'll be left with 4x minus 5. Then we have x squared minus x plus 1. Our final check. Are there any two numbers that multiply to 1 and add to negative 1? No. So we are done factoring this.